Hi, this is David Harper of Bionic Turtle with an illustration of the T distribution, also called the student's T. It's a popular and important distribution when the sample size is small, in particular when we don't know the variance or volatility of the underlying population, which is typically the case. So the student's T distribution has a lot of practical application. To illustrate it, I compare it here on this chart to the standard normal distribution, the bell curve that is so familiar. I'm just showing the right side of the curve for both, or the right tail. That's because both of them are symmetrical distributions, so you can imagine there's a mirror copy to the left. The normal is plotted in green, and then I have two students' T distributions. Here in blue is a student's T distribution with two degrees of freedom. The T distribution takes a single parameter called the degrees of freedom. So technically I have an infinite number of T distributions here depending on how many degrees of freedom. For two degrees of freedom, let's see here, it starts with a peak that's smaller than the normal. And then notice over here we see why it's helpful to us. In blue, we can see the T distribution relative to the normal has a fatter tail. There's more density in the extreme tail. This is why it's helpful to us. Now I have another student's T in here plotted in dark gray. It has 20 degrees of freedom and notice it's much closer to and even approximates the normal distribution. So this is another thing about the student's T. As the degrees of freedom increase, the student's T converges with the normal distribution and becomes the normal. At degrees of freedom of 100 or 200 or so, it's approximately the same thing as the normal distribution. Now, let me show an example with Google's daily returns. So what I did is I pulled periodic daily returns for Google's stock for the 10 final days in 2007. So this is a small sample. 10 periodic returns and then I've taken the sample mean or average of these daily returns. It's pretty close to zero as I would expect since these are only daily returns. And then I've taken the standard deviation of those returns by using the Excel function equals STDEV that's without the P and that indicates a sample standard deviation. And finally, I count the number of returns with the count function. So those are the only three parameters I need. I'm going to collapse the data rows now, but I'm going to keep those aggregate statistics. And again, I only have the three. A sample or average return for Google's stock over those 10 days of 0.02% a sample standard deviation, which is the same thing as the volatility on a daily basis of 1.54%, and we know we have 10 returns in that series. Now here's how I can use the student's T. I can ask myself, well, my sample told me the average return for the stock was 0.02%. Let's assume there is such thing as a true underlying population return. What I mean is, let's assume that Google has something like a real daily return that we can expect. And I would like to know whether 0.02% is fairly close to that underlying population average return. I can use the student's T combined with a confidence to see where that true population return might lie. So I do need to pick a confidence level to get a confidence interval. In this case, I'm going to choose 95%. And then my significance is simply going to be 1 minus the 95%, in this case, 5%. So if we look over here at the formula, I can create a confidence interval and the confidence interval, what it says is that if I have a sample mean, that's this X bar, and in that case, this case, this is my 0.02%, I can craft a confidence interval that with 95% confidence, I can say my true population mean lies within that. In this case, that sample mean plus or minus, I go plus for the 
upper limit minus for the lower limit my critical t value that's informed by the t distribution multiplied by my sample standard deviation divided by the square root of the number of observations in my sample notice this small s is not the sigma the greek sigma that we oftentimes see for standard deviation that's because small s connotes sample standard deviation as opposed to the population standard deviation but this formula that uses the critical t value based on the t distribution will create a confidence interval for me such that i can say with ninety five percent confidence my true population mean is going to lie within those limits and so to do that i need to calculate this critical t here this critical t is a function of my significance and i can use the excel function equals t inv it only takes two parameters the significance level here which is my probability in this case it's five percent or one minus my confidence and then here i've got my degrees of freedom which are the number of observations ten days minus one so i get a critical t of two point two six two and then i can apply this formula to create a lower limit and an upper limit such that the lower limit if i re just recreate it here is the sample mean minus my critical t multiplied by the sample standard deviation that's right here divided by the square root of the number of observations that's ten close parens and i get the lower limit of negative one point oh eight percent i do the same formula here for the upper limit the only difference is i add instead of subtract so that's me doing this operand right here i close and i have here my confidence interval and what it tells me is based with ninety five percent confidence i can say the true population mean is within between negative one point oh eight percent and w positive one point one two percent and this has been a function of both my confidence and the number of days so for example just pretend that i went to a hundred days i increased the number of days from ten to a hundred notice my confidence interval tightens i have a smaller confidence interval with more observations and also what if i increase my confidence from ninety five to say ninety nine point nine percent well my confidence interval widens because if i want to be that confident almost a hundred percent confidence i need to widen my confidence interval so that's an application of the students t the critical t value in the students t distribution this is david harper the bonic turtle thanks for your time